beginner's guide on how to go about performing gonioscopy. In this video, animations and videos have been used to make it more simpler. The normal angle anatomy starts from the Schwalbe's line anteriorly and extends up to the root of iris posteriorly. In between, we have the non-pigmented trabecular meshwork followed by the pigmented trabecular meshwork, scleral spur, ciliary body band and then the root of iris. On the right hand side is a real-time video of the normal angle depicting the same structures. A nice gonioscopic status is always dynamic. In angle closure suspects with increase of age, when lens thickness increases, the patient may end up with an acute angle closure attack of glaucoma with a clinical picture like this. The standard method of performing gonioscopy is an indirect one. The observed pigment in the eye at 12 o'clock is reversed by 180 degree to 6 o'clock, but the PA on the left side is not crossed and remains on the left in the gonio mirror as well. In the indirect method, the lens with the flange, example a Goldman lens, can be used with a viscous agent. On the left hand side video, the gross appearance of the flange is demonstrated and on the right hand side of the video, the microscopic appearance of the flange is seen. We also have a lens without a flange, which is a Zeiss or a Sussman, where the patient's own tear film can be used. Goldman single mirror, Goldman two mirror, Goldman three mirror, and the trabeculoplasty lens all have a flange. The technique of performing a gonioscopic examination starts with precautions. The graticule of the slit lamp has to be reduced to 5 mm or less. This is to prevent light-induced pupillary meiosis from taking place. Lens examination. Look for cracks, bubbles and tiny oily secretion in the lens because we don't want the bubble to cause trouble while performing gonioscopy. The small bubble in the left will appear as large as the one on the right under the slit lamp, obscuring the angle structures. Patient examination. In the upright sitting position, patient is made to look up and the lens is positioned into the lower fornix. Once the lens is inserted, the slit lamp graticule is adjusted and brought down to as minimum as 4 mm. This is to prevent light induced pupillary meiosis as the light falling into the pupillary area may constrict the pupil and pull the peripheral iris away from the angle causing an artifactually widened angle. The corneal wedge is demonstrated to identify the Schwalbe's line. After that, the slit beam is widened to visualize the angle structures. In this scenario, the angle is normal on the left with peripheral anterior sinicae on the right. That brings a confusion in the mind of a beginner as to what is an iris process and what is a peripheral anterior sinicae. An iris process is a fine arborizing strand from the root of iris. It causes neither obstruction to drainage nor difficulty in visualizing the structures beneath them. Whereas PAS is more broader, denser and adheres to the angle dresses. They cause obstruction to aqueous drainage. This is an animation showing the arborization of the iris process taking place which is seen in majority of the normal patients. Whereas PAS is pathological and can be seen at any level extending up to the Schwalbe's line. With the Goldman 3 mirror and single mirror, three rotations are needed to visualize all the four quadrants. Whereas in the two mirror, only a single rotation would suffice. The lens is removed after asking the patient to close his eyes so that the vacuum generated is reduced facilitating painless lens removal. In the dynamic gonioscopy, we have the manipulative gonioscopy and the indentation gonioscopy. To begin with, the patient is made to look straight and the inferior mirror is viewed, which shows an obscured angle. On asking the patient to look towards the inferior mirror, that is, on looking downwards, manipulation is ensured opening the obscured angles. Both the Sussman and the Posner indirect lens 
don't possess a flange with these lenses the examination technique involves anesthetizing the cornea followed by placement of the lens on the cornea exposed within the interpalpebral aperture the patient's own tear film is used as coupling fluid the diamond of the lens is either oriented as a x or as a plus lens rotation is eliminated as all the four quadrants can be viewed simultaneously an axial pressure is applied for performing indentation gonioscopy gonioscopy should not be performed for an infective eye bullet present on the cornea post traumatic eye and phacomorphic glaucoma patients moving on to how to grade an angle in she's grading it ranges from 0 to 4 as shown in the animation on the left hand side of the video where grade 4 is the most occludable angle grade 1 is wide open and grade 4 is the most occluded occludable angle is one in which the pigmented trabecular meshwork is not visible in at least three quadrants shaffer's grading system is based on geometrical angle width the grading of which is an exact reversal of she's grading system in grade 3 and grade 4 more or less all the angle structures are visible the geometric width is 20 to 40 degrees in grade 2 only the trabecular meshwork is visible with a width of 20 degrees in grade 1 only the schwalbe's line is visible which is less than 10 degrees common clinical scenarios in a pxf patient gonioscopy may reveal a sample as this line In eye syndrome patients, prominent anteriorly displaced Schwalbe's line with PAS may be noted. In pigment dispersion syndrome, homogeneous pigmentation of trabecular meshwork is seen. In patients with history of trauma, angle recession with broad ciliary body band and a disinserted iris processes should be ruled out. Cases of aniridia in congenital glaucomas may reveal an anteriorly displaced rudimentary iris stump. Surgical scenarios Ostium patency post trabeculectomy can be evaluated. In this scenario, the pigment clumps blocking the ostium can be noted. Focal points always correlate anterior chamber angle width with anterior chamber depth. Width less than 20 degree is considered narrow, width greater than 20 degree is considered wide. Superior most angle is the narrowest. Deep chambered eye almost always has a wide angle compared to the shallow chambered eye. thus making the iris to have as minimal contact with the lens in deep chambered eye making them less prone for pupillary block thank you